Hello and welcome to this session on the migration with console from BitTitan. What I want to show you on this session is how we navigate around the console, how we do things like look after the, the customers that we have in there, how we look at our projects, how we add items in there, set up endpoints, uh, look at the licensing, really a, a good overview of really how to get around the whole migration with system. The first thing obviously is to sign in. And if you don't have an account already, you can create one, just register there, but I'm going to use the one that I, I have, which will take us to this standard status screen. And you can see from here, we can see all the projects that we have uh, currently live for us. We can have obviously multiple projects, multiple customers, multiple things going on, all from the single login, which is very handy. So you can see on here, I've got four projects in play. Uh, there's a mixture of Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, and the mailbox migrations. It gives you a, a basic status of what they're doing. They're quite small, these ones, but these numbers obviously relate to what is currently in progress. If we go and start a new project, if we hit Create Project here, you can see we've got different types. So mailbox is obviously the for uh, things like the Exchange, the Microsoft 365, Lotus Notes from Google, if we're taking mailbox migrations, moving them from one cloud source to another. Uh, then we have the uh, documents, which is for things like SharePoint and OneDrive, public folders, collaboration for Teams, and of course the Exchange Hybrid, uh, all the different projects available for us to use. So I'm gonna do the a mailbox project as a starter and just show you how we might create one of those. So we'll give it a project name to start with. I'll just call this one Demo Project. And we can look at the customer. Now the customer is really, important for the, the setting up of what the base domains are. And you can see I've got one here, which we've been doing other sessions with. But if I create a new one, we we'll see what it's asking for. It's going to be asking for that primary domain and the company name. Everything else is optional, but uh, you can fill that out. It's really for your reference, really. Uh, but you can just fill out these two items here. So I might just put these two items in here just as the primary email domain. Now, this could be uh, the source or the destination, it really doesn't matter. It just uses it as the, the base information for setting up the project. Normally, you'd do it from the uh, from the source, and we just hit save there. So we can see migration test company. But the, the important points next are when we set up the source and the destination settings. So you get the option, as you can see, with the endpoints. It'll look at the endpoints which you have, and you can see, obviously, it's a new customer. There aren't any endpoints. Let me create a new one, and this is where we get to tell it what type of endpoint it is. So this is where we set up the migration. Is it a Lotus Notes? Is it a Google? Is it a 365? And, and we can put that information there. So in this case, I'm just going to call it M36510. That's just the name. You can call it whatever you like. And we can say, well, what is your source? So in this case, I'm going to choose Microsoft 365. But you can see the other options that are available to us. And obviously, depending on what we choose, will dictate what it is appearing here. So in here, we're just going to give it the uh, the username and password for that. Um, I'm just going to go in here and with test.com and obviously the password associated with that. And just add that in. There's our settings, and we move to the next step, which is the destination. And we new again and give it a name. And this one might be one you've seen in other sessions, but it's going to be the linkage into that. Uh, the other tenants that we have. I'm going to use this particular one as the example. Password. Like so. So you can see that's pretty easy to set up. We just do the next step there and it will carry on. Now inside Migration Wiz, we do have the option for tenant to tenant coexistence. Now this is uh, something that is Useful if you are doing uh, a staged migration between two tenants and you want to have things like free busy and mail coexistence. Really, what it would do it fundamentally is things like creating the mail user objects in the tenant pre migration automatically and it binds them through and converts them, plays with the borders. But there's a lot more to it than that. Please feel free to go to the learn more option and, uh, and be part of that. These here are currently optional, they are the tenant IDs to use with modern auth. They're not in use right now, uh, but they will be over the, uh, the coming short while as these things get released. As you can see, they are optional there. But it saves us having to put the, the tenant IDs into the advanced option. So that's a nice little feature that's, uh, that will be arriving shortly. So really, we go to our summary here. 
link to this is what it's going to be migrating and we will say save project and we are pretty ready to get started now the management of all of those items like the uh, some of the endpoints and uh, company names the domains is not done in the migration with console directly what you do is you here and you go to the msp complete and from here you can actually look at the things you have so when you go to customers here that's where you see these customers and you can do it so if you were setting up a new uh, customer that was using an existing domain that you've already got registered you're going to have to go in and archive that off or change it this is really your console for looking after all of that so if I look at this migration test company, the one we've just done, you can see here we don't have any users in any of the uh, migration projects as yet, but we do have a couple of endpoints. And that's where these are the endpoints we set up before. We can go and edit those and play with them and, and look at them. So you can see this is where we start to look at that information. And if we need to, we can remove it or change it if necessary. There are some steps that you're going to need to do when you're setting up an M365 tenant to tenant migration, for example, around the permissions that you need on the tenant, service accounts, and, and things that need to happen in the background on both tenants before you can really start work on it. Now, I've done that on uh, these test migrations already. There is another session you can look at which focuses specifically on all of that and the uh, application permissions and the like. So please look at that session for setting those up. But uh, with all that in place, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the this migration here because it's only got one user in there and it's from that, that tenant, the zeotrobe to the, the planium.com tenant. And we're going to add some more people in. And I want to show you different ways that you can add the users into each of the different types of projects. So when we started this migration, we only had one user in, we're using it for, for testing, but now we want to add some more people in and get this get this migration cranking. So if I look at my user details panel here you can see there's another user here Fred logs we want to bring him in and we want to uh, get the migration started for him so there's various ways we can bring that in into here we go to the add and we've got the add from msp complete now what that's going to do is it'll look up and say does it does it exist in any other of the projects for that zeotrope customer and you can see we've only got john smith in here he's already in the system so he is not there now that means that he the user fred blogs is not part of any of these other migrations so we can't just bring him across so we've got to use a different way of doing it the msp complete is a very handy way if you've got uh, um, resources if they did exist in any of the other projects to do it but what we need to do there is we can say either quick add bulk add and auto discover so quick add as you'd expect really is just keying in two names here and save item and close and it will bring them in if you're only doing two or three that or a very small amount that's obviously going to work quite well for you it's quite good to do but um obviously anything more than that we're going to need to do it a different way so cancel there let's have a look at the bulk add instead now this is going to mean that we have a, a csv file to, to work with. so what do we need in the csv file what we can do is we can say download the sample it's going to be very very simple to be fair. and if you do download the sample and then have a look at it you'll see just a bit smaller for you you'll see that the information it requires is pretty basic and if you had a migration sheet uh, with all the information in you could quite easily match the source and destination email i'm going to uh, just key that in into here Pretending we've got a master spreadsheet with all the information in it. And, and we'll go ahead and save that and have that available for import. And so in here, you can see that it's brought up this information. So if we had you know, a few hundred, a few thousand lines in there, they would appear like this. You can then you go in and edit these in place as well if you need to. But it's a good way to take a spreadsheet of a lot of information and just bring it in you don't need the login name and password uh, that's only if you are not using the application um, personation and you needed to have login names and passwords for particular mailboxes in most migrations you're not going to need to do that just have a list of names there and if you say save there you'll see that then logs pops in there nicely now the last way of doing it is going to be the 
auto discover. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to go and delete thread from here. Because what we're going to do is let the system auto discover the items, and it will then, if I say start auto discover, which I've already run one previously, but let's kick this one off and see how many users it will find inside the source tenant. So that's found three items there, and we're going to say yes, we want to import those. It does just obviously take all the items that it finds and it will drop them in there. And you can see there's a few that we don't want. I'm not really interested in these two. I just want Fred. If we had a few thousand in there, you just go through and, and make sure you have lists. So we'll just go and delete those two. I want to show you something else that it's done. Obviously, uh, from the source, it's doing the auto discover on the source tenant. It does not know what the domain is on the destination tenant. So it automatically just puts in the same one. So you're going to need to go through and change that. Uh, this is why I feel sometimes the, uh, the CSV or the spreadsheet is a, is a good idea to have. Um, obviously, whatever migration planning or however you choose to do it is up to you. I'm just showing you the different options here. But what you do to change this domain, you don't need to go and edit them all in the, individually. You go and select as many as you want. I'll say select all, but we'll take this one off. And you just hit change domains. And you can see here it's changing it into that destination. You can type over the top of that. And if I hit save and close, you'll see now Fred is correct with his planium.com. So let's talk about taking off a migration and verifying that all the credentials and the, uh, the work we've done with the application permissions and everything is correct. And we'll go through and take one of these and you would say verify credentials. Now that will Go ahead and do that. As you can see, we've already done it on this one. That's completed the verification. We only need to do a verify credentials on one account in the whole of the migration. Just doing it on one is enough because it's going to use those same credentials when it's doing the rest of the migration. Obviously, we've got to make sure that fredblogs.planium.com does exist. Uh, you get an error if it doesn't. But the reason I want to talk about the uh, picking things off is because it does flow into our license discussion at the same time. What you'll notice here is if I were to go and start this migration, let's say I want to do a um, three stage migration for him, and I'll come back to exactly what they are shortly. You can see that it's currently complaining that we don't have the migration with this mailbox license to go ahead and do this work, and it's asking us to purchase licenses, even though I know I have the UMB, which is the user migration bundle licenses, which encompasses the mailbox license. So let me explain what's really going on here and how all this works. You can see here it's talking about using UMB licenses here. So let's just cancel that out of it because I want to jump into the licenses section here. So that is all driven by MSP Complete. You would have seen this in here, and you can see I've got plenty of different licenses here. I've got user migration bundle. I do not have any user mailbox bundles. Um, so I've only got the it's better, obviously, the user migration bundle allows us to do more, but obviously we need to, to work out how we can apply that into that migration project. So let me go to this purchase button here, and I want to show you these different types. Now, on the screen here, you can see there's a difference between a user migration bundle and a mailbox license. The mailbox license only does just the mailbox and nothing else per user. There's a 50 gig limit, um, and it's obviously a little bit cheaper. The user migration bundle will handle everything in terms of, the, like it says here, the 865 tenant to tenant, the personal archives, documents, and the mailbox itself. Now, Outlook configuration here is one of the key differences on them. It means you can use the Deployment Pro, which is a whole other another thing to explore. But because of that, it means we have to deal with the licenses a little bit differently. And while I'm here as well, you can see we've also got the tenant migration bundle, which is, as you can see, does everything for the user. And if I scroll down here, we've got the collaboration license, which we use per team. We, uh, we go through and you can see the shared document migration for 50 gig license or 100 gig license, which is obviously for different sources like uh, the SharePoint and, uh, and Google Groups. Hybrid licenses, uh, obviously if you're doing a hybrid migration from Exchange, that's the one you need there. Public folder license is a, a separate thing on its own. 
and uh, then you can see the, the G Suite mailbox document licenses. So you can see there's different licenses for different things. Um, the most popular one is that user migration bundle, which is what you see here. So jumping back in here, you can see we've got plenty of this user migration bundle. So what I need to do before I kick off a migration, you can see here, user migration bundle active says no. So I need to tick on these two and I am going to apply licenses there. And it will tell me how many I have, tell me how much I'm going to use and I will hit apply. And that will take a, take a few seconds to do, but it will put a yes there for us once it's done. So now you can see we've got the user migration bundle active. We have the yes flag on there, so we can start to go ahead and do things. Now, if I click on this one, you can see the verify credentials. Really, we've talked about that before. That's just verifying that the credentials will work tenant to tenant and that we can get in and do things. The trial migration is very similar. What it does, it goes one stage further than the verify credentials. It will go through and create like a very basic top level hierarchy and really just have a test to make sure it can write data into those mailboxes and do that. I would recommend that you just do a trial migration on one of the users. You don't want to be doing that across everybody. Just do one and make sure that it can write data in there. These two are just bound together just to make sure things are, are working. But it's, it's these options here, the pre-stage and the full migration, that are really going to start doing that, that heavy lifting for you. So let's have a look at this one for John Smith and look at pre-stage. So what does pre-stage really do for us? Now let's suppose that John had a mailbox of say 20 gig and we know we want to cut that over on Friday night but he wants to have everything available for Saturday morning. Um, having 20 gig of mail is a lot. So what we would do is, is a few weeks ahead maybe, uh, we would pre-stage his mailbox into the target. Now it is recommended that uh, two things here. Once we start this pre-stage activity, remember this is a one-time sync of the mail into the target. So what we don't want people doing is cleaning up their mailbox because obviously once we've made a copy of it into the target, it's going to be done. No matter what cleanup they do on the on the source side, it's not going to take effect on the target. And secondly, we don't want them in the target looking at the mail that's obviously been pre-staged. We want them to do that afterwards. So really, have your mailboxes created. They'll be empty. Pre-stage everything uh, ahead of time. And you can see that... Uh, it has the option to say, what do we want to do? 30 days, 60, 90, a specific time if you want to. Normally we'd put 30 days and really we'd, we'd pre-stage everybody on the entire migration uh, way ahead of time and get that done. Makes our cut over with the full migration a lot easier. So we'll say here and we'd say start migration and, and that will go ahead and do that for us. Now, I've already done that on Fred. I'm just using this as an example, but let's have a look at John again and what would happen if we do a full migration. So let's say with John, we've done our pre-stage, we've got him ready. It is now time to do the full migration for him, which will go up here. And you can see it's going to pick up everything. So, you know, the context calendars and the like, and we can automatically kick off that migration. So it's going to take everything in the mailbox uh, that it hasn't done as part of the pre-stage. And it will have obviously the last 30 days of mail as well, and all these other items as well, and be ready to, to go for him. So we can hit the... Uh, Obviously, the start migration and kick that off. And you can see we did that schedule. We scheduled it, as you can see here, it's scheduled for midnight tonight uh, to kick off for him. So that will do a full migration and uh, he'll have his mailbox obviously ready to go for Saturday morning. So, as a summary of that, you really want to be doing the pre stage way ahead of time, 30 days worth of mail backwards. And, and then when you're ready to do the cutover, schedule the full migration and you'll find that the migration will run through very, very quickly after that because it's only doing a relatively small amount of, of data. Now, if a migration completes and it does have a certain number of errors uh, that it couldn't do for any reason, you can see these have all got zero, but what you can do after the full migration is, is completely done, if there are errors that you want to retry, uh, let's suppose there might be some some attachments or or other issues. Um, we'll find that uh, you can click on here and you can say retry errors, and that will uh, that'll go ahead and give that another pass and see if you can fix any of those. If you've done anything in the source mailbox to fix up any you know any any attachments that it wasn't happy with, that sort of thing is a good a good way to to get that mail across. Now. 
when you're talking about the the data that is that is migrated, it does have a watermark and it's actually stored in the database of the migration with console. So it keeps track of what it's migrated and that's how it doesn't create duplicates of my when it runs again. What you can do is you can reset those items in the database, uh, which is under obviously very specific circumstances you want to do that. But if you had a mailbox that you do need to reset the watermarks so that it does re-migrate all the data, obviously there's a you'd be aware that there will be some duplicates if it's doing the same mail again, but you can do it. And therefore you click on here and you say reset items. And you see there's all the information. It does give you the warnings that obviously things that, uh, that it's going to remove. And, uh, and you can reset those items if you need to. Um, I would suggest what you would do is uh, use a few test mailboxes and run that reset items and then run a migration again just so you get a good handle of what it's going to do if you do reset those items. As I say, very specific cases of re-migrating items in a mailbox that you'd need to do that. Um, so be aware of that. There are some help desk articles around that, but I wanted to make you aware that you can reset those watermarks in terms of the migration with console. Now, what you'll find across all of the different types of migration with projects, if you look at the OneDrive migration, SharePoint migration, all of these things, notice how everything is very, very similar on these top lines. The, the way things are done across all the different projects is going to be the same. So everything you learn about those is uh, is really transferable from one project to another, which is very good. Obviously, they have different particularities um, in each of them, but uh, generally the, the concept is going to be the same. The, the verify credentials, the passes you do, and, and how things are moved across in, in terms of the entire migration system. So with that, I do thank you for watching. This has been helpful in the, the guide around how to get around the migration with console and, and start and kick off these migrations. So um, thank you again, and we'll talk to you next time.